Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Melissa Rodriguez. I'm a second year medical student at FAU. And today I'm here with Dr. Allison Ferris. She is the program director for the internal medicine residency here at FAU. And I was very excited to have her today to answer some questions for us and get a little bit of her perspective. Um, so yeah, we'll start out with, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where did you train? How was your training? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so I went to medical school in Philadelphia at Drexel University College of Medicine. And from there I stayed to do my internal medicine residency there, uh, affiliated with Hahnemann University Hospital. I was there for three years and then stayed an additional year as a chief resident. And that was just a chance for me to uh, practice my administrative skills, education, really sort of expand on um, my abilities to sort of manage things. Um, I stayed at Drexel for another eight and a half, nine years um, before I decided to head south to Florida. And I've been at Florida Atlantic for almost four years. For four years, wow, that's amazing. So what jobs do you have after your training? Sure, I, um, after my training I was actually lucky. I was able to stay at Drexel for my first job. I worked as um, uh, the course director for the required medicine sub-internship. So the fourth year rotation that all of the students had to do mm -hmm. in internal medicine. Um, we had nine or ten hospital sites where the students could rotate, so I not only oversaw what they did at my own hospital, but also at all of those other sites. I would have to go visit those sites, oversee the grading process, the educational events like lectures and things. Um, we implemented a, a simulation activity during the rotation, so it was a, a great position to sort of get my feet wet in the world of education. Mm -hmm. um, I also was uh, seeing patients in our faculty practice, so I had my own set of patients that I was getting used to being um, a full-time primary care doctor. And then in addition to that, I also um, spent some time every so often rounding in the hospital and working weekends and taking admissions at night. So it was a, a good sort of starter nice. job. Yeah, and then from there, um, I switched over and became an associate program director for the internal medicine residency. Um, and again, got to stay at Drexel where I was very familiar and it was like home. Um, so it gave me a lot of chance to sort of figure out how to do both the doctoring side of things as well as the education side of things. Okay. And then um, you became a residency director four years ago? Um, I so I came, I, I came to Florida to be an associate program director. Mm -hmm. So um, I helped out with um, competency committee stuff, so making sure that people were on track doing what they needed to do in residency. Uh, and then in the uh, June of 2020 is when I became the program director. June of 2020. So it's been yeah. a year and a half. A little half. over a year, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. How's that like? How's your um, job as a It's great. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of doing my dream job right now. This is mm -hmm. what I have sort of geared myself towards and what I wanted to ultimately do. So I'm happier than I could ever be. Oh, wow. And how's your average day structured? <laughs> so every day is different. Um, but it... You know, I'm, I'm fortunate we live really close to FAU and to the hospital, so I'm able to see my kids in the morning and get them off to school most days. And then I'm usually, um, I'm usually in work by between 8 or 8.30, sometimes earlier, just depending on what I have going on. Um, and then it depends. Some days I'm in the clinic with the residents for half of the day. Uh, I have lots of meetings throughout the day that I'm in. Um, spend a lot of time on Zoom or WebEx, um, and then there, my day usually ends anywhere between, you know, 4:30 and 6, just depending on how much I have going on. Okay, and that's every day, Monday through Friday. Yeah, so I I mostly work Monday through Friday. Now okay. I also cover hospital service every. Well, probably about six weeks out of the year. So actually last week, I was rounding in the hospital. So I would get here between 8 and 8.30, and I would leave between 5 and 6.30. And in between that, I, you know, in between seeing the hospital patients, I was doing meetings, answering um, outpatient phone calls, okay. talking to residents, counseling residents. So every day is very different. So what percentage of, of your time is spent in clinical, seeing your patients? Um, so I'm, I am 20% clinical, 
Um, so right now on a normal week, I'm in the outpatient resident clinic two mornings a week. Um, and then I do about six weeks of inpatient service and then yeah. maybe another two or three weekends where I just fill in and cover. So about 20% clinical. Got it. So it's a mix. <laughs> yeah, it's a great mix. Okay, so I want to ask a question you probably have gotten asked a bunch mm -hmm. of times, but why did you choose internal medicine? Oh, it's a great question. Um, so I think for me, I enjoyed third year of medical school so much. It was great to finally get into a position where I could see patients and actually start doing the things that I had learned and, and putting all the stuff I was learning about into the context of patients. Right. Um, so I enjoyed most of my clinical rotations, um, and I really liked the day-to-day -day busyness of, yeah. of being in the hospital. Um, I think when I got to my internal medicine rotation, um, I realized that I enjoyed the variety of it, as well as the, um, the patient relationships. I enjoyed the diseases. I enjoyed the, the mix, the fact that like, I could have 20 patients on my service and they all have different things. Um, so I liked also the fact that I could potentially go on and do a variety of different subspecialties if I wanted to. Um, so I think that's sort of how I ended up picking internal medicine. Okay. And did you ever consider any fellowships within? <laughs> um, internal I, so I did for a very brief period of time consider infectious diseases mm -hmm. um, because I liked the thoroughness of those physicians. I liked the fact that I could continue to have a bit of a primary care practice mm -hmm. in the setting of, of HIV medicine. Um, but then I realized that I didn't love it enough to do a fellowship. <laughs> Right. Okay. That's, that's understandable. <laughs> okay. So, um, a little bit more of, about your personal life. Mm -hmm. How is it like being a mom in medicine, balancing being a good doctor? Yeah. Um, it's exhausting, um, but it's good. I have, uh, I have very good support, um, and I have sort of throughout my time as, as a, a, a woman in medicine. Um, when I, my kids were little, like when they were born, um, I commuted far to work, over mm -hmm. an hour each way, but that was so that my mother-in-law could basically take care of my kids. Um, mm -hmm. Now that I'm in Florida and I live like one mile from FAU, um, my husband is a stay-at-home dad, so he mm -hmm. handles a lot of the day-to-day -day things for the family. Um, but more importantly, he's just available for before school, after school, um, sports drop-offs and pickups, things like that. So, um, yeah, I think it, it's it's hard, but I don't think there's um, I don't think there's I don't think it's undoable. Mm -hmm. I just think everybody has to find what works for them. And do you have any habits or routines that you I think that helped you in your career and um, productivity tips? So I live and die by deadlines and I think having the to-do list, knowing when things are are required or you know how much time I have to work on it. I think that helps a lot. Um, I think the other thing for me is I've always been pretty regimented about sleep. So I generally go to bed at a typical like between 9 and 10 p.m. Um, I'm an mm -hmm. early riser, so I'm very productive in the mornings. So even though I might not get to work until 8 or 8.30, I usually have already done work before I came in. Um, so I think those are ways that I have sort of stayed on track and been able to get things done. At what time do you wake up? Um, well, right now, it, between usually between five and six, depending oh. on the day and depending on what I'm going to do that morning. Okay, good structure. And then yeah. you go to sleep by? Um, I'm usually falling asleep <laughs> um, between nine and ten. Um, I am notorious for falling asleep in most television shows, <laughs> movies. Pretty much as soon as I sit down, Same. I fall asleep. <laughs> so, Yeah. What do you think makes a good doctor? A correct um, so I think most importantly, I think you have to want to do the job. You have to truly want to be responsible for people's care, responsible for their health. You have to be all in when, when you're there. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean you have to be all in all the time. But when I'm at work, I'm at work. 
And um, when I'm in the office, I'm focused on the office. So I think Mm -hmm. really it's that dedication that has to be there. That being said, when I'm away, I am unplugged and I try not to be thinking about work. Um, I think the other thing that makes a good doctor is really it comes down to communication. Mm -hmm. It comes down to being able to have a conversation with somebody, connect with them, attempt to to best understand what they're either going through or what they're trying to tell you, Um, being clear about what you can and will do for somebody, what your limitations are, admitting when you don't know things. Um, But really, like, it's communication at the heart of all of that. Yeah. How would you describe your life outside of medicine? Do you have any projects that you (laughs) have time for, perhaps? Yeah. um, So outside of medicine, I have a husband and two sons. (laughs) um, And we like to be outside, um, either in the pool, on the beach, on the boat. I like to exercise. Um, I love to bake. That's like my my favorite mm-hmm. thing. Yummy. So cookies, <laughs> cake, cupcakes, bread. I'm getting better at cooking. I I think that's a continual work in progress for me. I also we we do a fair amount of like stuff around the house. So mm-hmm. various projects like we just did a bathroom renovation project and that was it was a very minor one compared to some of the ones we've done in our lives but um, nonetheless it turned out great and actually we started using it this weekend so wow. yeah and for meals do you meal prep or um no I just try to <laughs> I don't meal prep but I try to meal plan mm. meaning I try to think of what we're going to eat that week and on what days and then when I go to the grocery store I buy what I need for the different days of the week and I uh, I have a couple like key things that help me out. So one is I I do subscribe to HelloFresh because oh, I really cool. yeah I really like the different food the variety. I like that everything comes in the box. Is it an every day or every week? Or? We do it probably. I would say we probably do it like half the time, a third of the time. Um, so like we so there's some weeks we get it and some weeks we don't. I also you know have just figured out things that are easier for me to do. Um, mm-hmm. to do. And and so certain certain oven dinners are mm-hmm. very quick for me. The hardest part is like chopping vegetables, but I actually mm-hmm. like that part because it's a little bit therapeutic. So Yeah, and you have to uh, give an example for the patients, right? Consume exactly. Vegetables. So I do, yeah. <laughs> so I have actually gotten so much better at my vegetable eating as I've gotten <laughs> older. My mother is so happy with me. <laughs> question is your perspective on uh, why internal medicine versus family medicine and how these mm-hmm. two specialties differ. Yeah, so um, internal medicine is basically doctors for adults, so mm-hmm. you have to be sort of 18 and over. Family medicine is really the care of the family, so thinking about the, the, pregnant, uh, the pregnant mom all the way through the... Mm-hmm you know, elderly grandparent, um, and, and all phases in between. So internal medicine, um, I might have a patient who's pregnant, but I'm not caring for their pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't do anything with kids or teens. Um, but you know, once you're an adult, we're all good. So that's really the biggest difference, um, between family medicine and internal medicine. For me personally, um, I like children, but I didn't want to take care of children, right. so family medicine was definitely off the table. Mm-hmm. And um, pregnancy is uh, not something I enjoy uh, managing take or taking care of, so also was a no-go. Okay. And why do you think someone should choose internal medicine? Well, I mean, I'm obviously biased <laughs> because that's, that's what I do. but. I think you have so many options in your career with internal medicine because most of the subspecialties Mm -hmm. come off of internal medicine. So GI, cardiology, pulmonary critical care, rheumatology, endocrinology, um, nephrology, all of these things start with internal medicine Mm -hmm. and then from there you go to subspecialty training. So... You can't do that from any other specialty except pediatrics. So, you know, if you like all of these things, but children mostly, you do this all in the world of peds. Um, But for me, um, I think internal medicine 
just serves as sort of home base for a lot of uh, medical care. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a general internist and a primary care physician, so I am like the quarterback of what happens with my patients. I'm their home base. They come to me first. Mm-hmm. They check with me about things, and that to me is, um, you know, really the the heart of why I chose medicine. Body boy. Yeah. Okay, and the last question I wanted to finish up this uh, video is, do you have a clinical pearl that you uh, want to share with medical students? Uh, Let's see, (laughs) clinical pearl. Okay, (laughs) so, all right, so I'm gonna give you two different ones. So Mm -hmm. the first is more of just the encouragement. Um, So, uh, you know, that that phrase, it gets better, um, is, is totally true. So for me personally, the first year of medical school was Um, exhaustingly hard and not very fun and uh, year two was better but still you know didn't quite um, light me on fire I got to year three where you get to see patients and really start to put it all into practice and it was so fun and then fourth year it was even better because the hours were nicer and you were really focused on the things you wanted to do since you were really going towards career planning. Um, And then once you get into residency, you're truly a doctor, so you get to do things. Um, But you work really hard, but then each year of residency also gets better. So that phrase, it gets better, better. is really (laughs) what I wanna share with you. In terms of um, other pearls, I I think the, the most important thing that I can, you know, emphasize is put in the work, put in the effort read the material, go to class or watch class online, however you prefer to learn, um, but put in the work. You're here, you're spending a lot of time and money, make it count because this is the rest of your life and you wanna be prepared and you wanna be ready and you wanna be able to do the best for your patients. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. And with that, we finish this video. We are going to have another second part in which we're going to specify more about the residency application and everything. Um, But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. Let me know down in the comments. And thank you. I'll see you in the next one.